Welcome to today's edition of the CIO Water Cooler TV. My name's David Savage. I'm very happy to be your host for today's interview, where I am joined by Erin Collins from Valiantis. Good morning, Erin. Good morning, David. Good to be here. Thank you for taking some time to join us. My pleasure. And look, we're going to have a quick chat to you about service design and service offerings. But first of all, let's let's give some context. We've obviously said that you are Erin Collins. We've said that you work with Valiantis, <laughs> but it would be good to find out exactly who Valiantis are and what you do for them. Well, Valiantis is a professional services provider and managed services provider um, based in Toulouse. Uh, I am based with them in London, UK, but we are a global company. So we have multiple outposts around North America, as well as uh, Northern and Southern Europe. Um, as I mentioned, we deliver a lot of pro professional services, um, managed services, managed hosting and support, but all of this on the, under the umbrella of the Atlassian platform. So the Atlassian ASEAN platform includes Jira Service Management, Jira Software. Um, Jira Software helps with project and work tracking. Jira Service Management is the ITSM or the IT Service Management tool offering that is uh, provided by Atlassian. They have a number of other products as well, but those are kind of the two, two core points. Um, Valiantis has three, what would you call them? Uh, well, we call them practices, <laughs> actually. <laughs> So Valiantis has three practices, Agile at Scale, Cloud and Consolidation, and ITSM. ITSM is the one that I headline, or I'm the global head of that particular practice. And what I do, I'm not part of the sales team. I'm not part of the professional services team. I'm mm -hmm. not part of the marketing team. But I kind of revolve around all of those and provide them the assets and the supports and the resources um, that they need to get their jobs done. So I have a really, I really kind of a broad reaching focus. All of our consultants within Valiantis are aligned to one of these practices. And um, we are now about 400 strong across our entire company after an acquisition in the US and another recent one in Germany. So we're really excited about that and being able to kind of really expand on our, our practice approach. Now, it will come as no surprise, I suppose, to people to hear that you are a company that growing that have made an acquisition. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of, if you look at the trends out there, uh, tech spend is is very uh, high when it comes to cloud, and and mm -hmm. there's a great deal of interest in in how that can help organisations transform. But how does that impact on creating that service offering, especially in this market where there is a huge amount of investment and interest at the moment from from clients? Well, you know. Way back, years ago, 15 years ago, HBR proposed a service model. I don't think this was particularly um, extraordinary, but they proposed a service model comprised of elements from the product model. So importantly, in the context of a service offering, service designers do best to focus on the experiences customers and employees want to have, right? Now, that means strategically, they have to sometimes identify, especially in IT service management, a trade-off. We're going to deliver this part of the service poorly, which might seem very kind of anti you know, it, like it doesn't make sense, right? We're going to deliver this part of the service poorly so that we can deliver an outstanding service experience over here because that is what our customers value most. So in the context of, you know, these cloud offerings and really focusing on SaaS, those new platforms are going to offer the flexibility to create that kind of value a little bit easier than, say, you know, your old fashioned brick and mortar racks in a building, which is, you know, it's a bit static, right? These cloud platforms are a lot more elastic, to use one of their words. Um, in when we're talking about making trade-offs in a service offering, you know, some of the examples you might think of might be a Walmart versus a Waitrose, for example. You know, where, where Walmart, and nothing against Walmart here, Walmart has a particular customer that they're going for, and that customer values convenience, they, can, they value volume, and they value low price. Whereas, and so that's where Walmart has, you know, put their eggs 
You know, that's where they've put their eggs in that basket. Waitrose is looking at a different customer. And so Waitrose has a different profile that they are um, aiming for. They have different things. They're not as worried about low price. They're worried more about quality. They're not necessarily worried about bulk buying um, in the way that a Walmart customer is. Um, Internally, in IT, the the way that kind of tends to play out is, say, channels, so email versus phone, um, self-service versus more personalized bespoke support. So, you know, an IT organization may prioritize email responses versus phone responses. Phone is a very expensive method of delivering service. Um, email is less expensive. Um, on the other hand, well, I'll get to that later, but on the other hand, chat is can be very, very inexpensive. So, I mean, there, you know, you have to kind of understand where your customers are, what they value, what they need to do. And we've been, you know, I mean, we've been burbling about experience for a, a number of years. And I've read too many studies lately, really, saying that senior leaders are identifying experience, employee experience, customer experience, agent experience. It's their priority this year, next year, um, especially following the last few years of upheaval we've seen. Look, you talked a lot about experience. You yeah. talked about value and yeah. actually what different organizations mm. value and different channels. So I suppose it's how does that ITSM model help reflect and inform what that customer or employee experience might be, given that there is such a vast difference or range of what experience might be? Yeah. You know, one of the things about all of the IT service management frameworks that exist, whether it's ITIL, whether it's um, YASM, which is yet another service management framework, literally those, (laughs) that acronym, FITSM, there are a bunch of different frameworks, but what they all have in common is, you know, putting people first. So, driving down to that end user level and trying to understand what's important to them. How is it that they do their job and what are those things that make it easier for them? And this comes into the a point that HBR made around employee management. You know, what is it that makes employees reasonably able to achieve service excellence? You know, what makes our employees reasonably motivated to achieve that excellence. And there are a lot of different answers to that. And since I'm talking about ITSM, my answer is always going to involve, you know, the processes and often the tools supporting those services. You know, you can you can ask what they want to do and how they want to do it. But if you don't have the tools that will support that process, then it's just going to be, you know, quite difficult to be able to deliver to employees the kind of services that they need. I mean, look, doesn't it drive you a little bit crazy when the tools you need are actually get in the way? Your microphone, David, is really nice. But what if you didn't have such good kit, right? The amount of time spent fixing the audio on this recording could purchase a good piece of equipment tenfold. It's the same with ITSM tools, really. When we spend the time to understand what's actually happening, let's say, with service desk agents or developers and the software that they use to manage that work, it can be really enlightening to see where time is wasted because the tool is slowing down the work when you understand the work. So, I mean, we could talk about lean and we could talk about eliminating waste. That doesn't have to be a scary thing. And it can be for a lot of organizations. When we bring business teams onto work management platforms, onto work management tools like you know, our ITSM tooling, we have to lead with a focus on our employees' well-being and their satisfaction with the work because that's the big outcome for them. I mean, that that outcome leads to customer satisfaction. Richard Branson is quoted as saying, happy employees make happy customers. And I really believe he's right. We've covered a lot of ground in (laughs) not a lot of time. Uh, And I think it's really interesting that you talk about 
tools perhaps getting in the way of, of, of providing a good service. If there was one message, though, that you wanted the audience to take away from today's mm -hmm. video, what would that be? I think it's this concept of meeting people where they are. Your internal customer, let's say your internal customer is a factory worker, and let's say they have limited local language and reading skills, but they're accountable for raising incident tickets. You know, an organization might start with a kiosk that looks a lot like a supermarket self-checkout terminal with icons and a number pad to identify severity. You know, the scanner picks up the employee's ID badge, it logs them in, it kicks off an incident investigation process. This is not trying to make people fit the tool. It's, it's about making the tool fit the people. And that's that's what it means to meet people where they are. So even though HBR, you know, had this this laundry list of things to do, it really comes down to that. And doing that in the cloud becomes easier and easier as more technologies advance, as AI advances, as the tools get better and better, as programming languages get better and better. So, you know, this this idea of the catalyst, <laughs> the catalyst moment, <laughs> you know. But it's it's meeting people where they are. That's it. That's all it's about. I think that's a, a really nice soundbite yeah. to finish on. Erin, yeah. thank you so much for giving up some time again this morning uh, and, and talking us through this particular sure. part of the landscape, which affects so many at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, David. It's been a real pleasure to to go a little bit more in depth on this. It's a Clearly, it's an area of passion for me. And if you've enjoyed today's episode of the CIO Water Cooler TV, please do take some time, have a look around the website, there are plenty more videos for you to watch.